Welcome back to Market to Market. Conrad Enel is a sought-after expert in energy affairs and international finance. He has served as the governor of both the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, as well as a Minister of Energy and Minister in the Ministry of Finance. Join me now as I chat with Mr. Enel about his views on the state of the economy and his expectations for the 2013-2014 budget. What are your views on government's management of the economy over the past year? The government has found itself in a very difficult position, given the fact that globally we've had some challenges to deal with. The government, however, does have an opportunity and has had an opportunity because its expenditure um, profile has not changed significantly. In fact, it has increased. So to a very large extent, therefore, there is no issue with expenditure. It is spending money. I think the issue is whether or not the amount of money that you're putting into the economy is doing what you expect it to do, which basically is that business owners will feel confident to invest in uh, additional plant, additional machinery, new products and services to serve a market. Clearly that has not occurred. And uh, to the extent that that has not occurred, I think that the management of the economy over the last year is in fact uh, lacking the confidence that is required for economic growth. Where do you think then that government should have allocated its resources differently? I don't think it's a question of allocation of resources. I think it's a question of explaining to the population what the challenges are, what is taking place globally, and what we need to do as a society. One of the things we haven't done well enough is we haven't uh, motivated the public sector to be more productive in delivering goods and services. That is the challenge that we face because if we can release the capability that currently exists within the public service for delivery of goods and services, then I think we will get the productivity that we are looking for. That boost will impact us directly and I think that boost will do two things. It will create uh, economic activity and it will create confidence. And I think that is the struggle that the government has. It must find a way to tap that potential that is there. Public service is what? 120,000 people? If you have 120,000 people working for you in one direction, there's absolutely no way that you could fail. The problem is that it's not working the way it's supposed to work at this point in time. Are there any areas that you feel the government might have achieved success over the last year in its management of the economy? I think that we need to wait to see what the review of the economy says. When the Minister of Finance presents the budget, there are going to be a number of documents that he would present in support of the budget statement. One would be the review of the economy. In the review of the economy, you'd see a couple of things. You'd see how the global economy has performed. You'd see what has taken place year on year with the various sectors in Trinidad and Tobago. You would see whether there was economic growth and where it was. And you would see the impact of the measures that were in fact taken in prior years and how they contributed this year in quantifiable and measurable terms. It is only when you look at that data you would be in a position to make the kind of analysis that you're asking about. Because there you'd be getting data that is evidence-based. It is going to say that last year we did 10, and this year we've done 12, so there's an improvement of 2. Or it is going to say last year we did 12, and this year we did 10, a decrease of 2. And it is that movement that you would look at and say, what are the things that has caused this movement to occur? And on that basis, you'll make a judgment. You can't do it otherwise. What would you like to see the Minister of Finance present in his budget? <clears throat> I think the Minister of Finance, and he's not going to do it because he can't, but I think the Minister of Finance cannot continue to carry us down the path that we seem to be going down. You cannot continue to borrow, to, to, to spend. I think the minister has to go back to what he said when he came into government. He basically said that we need to get to this stage where we are spending what we earn. Uh, philosophically, that's a position that you must take. You cannot spend what you don't have because if you don't have it, it means that somebody in the future 
will have to pay for it. And the future is going to be a very difficult place. If we look globally as what, at what is taking place, if we look at how the economies are transitioning, if we look at where the shifts are taking place, the, the future economy is going to be a, different, a difficult place. And therefore, you don't want to add additional burdens to a future society in circumstances where you could prepare now for that future. I think, therefore, what I would like to see the minister do is start talking about preparing for the future rather than simply living well at this point in time. It is not going to be sustainable. What needs to be done to prepare well for the future? What areas of the economy Two should... Two things. The first thing he needs to do is he needs to talk about expenditure. How are we spending the money that we have? We have revenues, and that revenue is being used to manage our expenditure. We need to find a way in which we can expand our revenue base and make our expenditure more productive. So for example, if we are spending money on wages and salaries, then we must understand where the productivity is coming from. Because if the productivity is not there, then basically what it does is it reduces the value of the dollar. And I think that he needs to really and truly get the country into productivity mode. We need to be a society where we understand that we have to create value. And the value that we create gives us a, the, the ability to be competitive, not only locally but globally. And we need to do what the energy sector has done for years. The minister needs to explain to the country that in Trinidad and Tobago, we are a global economy. And therefore, our standards must be global. And for us to survive, we need to understand what the best standards in the world are, and we need to excel, excel at them. Because many of our individual citizens who operate globally, that's how to do it. If you look at even in sport, the reason that we got gold medals is not because we are substandard, it's because we excel. That now needs to be a national uh, sort of um, aspiration. But everything we do is really not about here. It is about globally competitive. It's about the best we can. Yeah, we could be that. Do you think that the removal of the gas subsidy, the fuel subsidy rather, would be a wise decision? The gas subsidy issue is really not a money issue. The gas subsidy issue is an issue of whether you are going to inflict on the population at the lower levels higher cost insofar as transportation is concerned. And insofar as you increase transportation cost, you're going to increase cost of living. Removing the subsidy without an alternative low-cost transportation fuel is going to create a problem for everybody who is on fixed income. Because immediately as soon as you remove the subsidy, the differential in cost is going to go into the production chain. Once it goes into the production chain, every single item of goods that you have will increase in cost. It is going to be passed on to the final consumer. If the consumer is on fixed cost, salary, and wages, and you increase his expenditure, all of a sudden you have a situation where he has to make choices about what to do. Do you buy food or do you walk? Um, so I think that the issue about the subsidy is not a money issue. The issue of a subsidy is really an inflation issue. It's a cost of living issue. And therefore, a solution to the minister must be that he has to hold on until he has put in place a mechanism that allows transportation costs to stay where it is today. If he does not do that, he's looking for trouble. As the government tries to diversify away from oil and gas dependence, what areas of the economy you think should be focused on for growth? They've already identified about five or six areas. 
I don't know if you're familiar with them. Yes, I am. And I think that the conversation is wrong. I think the diversification con conversation has nothing to do with areas. The, the, the diversification conversation has to, to do, in my view, with moving away from the oil and gas product per se, but getting more of our citizens to be involved in the ownership of assets and the production from that ownership rather than simply the traditional move from oil and gas and going to something else. I think the government has missed it. It is really not about pointing people in the direction of, well, let's go into um, filming and creative rather than oil and gas. It's not that. It is let's get the 400,000 people who are involved in employment to become owners of entities and compete globally. If you do that, it means that you are creating more and you are also um, creating a situation where individuals will develop skills that are globally transferable. That's the wave of the future. So to me, diversification is not about product. Diversification is about what does the individual now do to ensure that in the future, individuals own more of this space and more of what is available rather than simply participate as a factor of production. Life has become pretty complicated for IT managers and employees. Everybody juggles a fleet of different devices and operating systems, all running their own local applications and requiring endless cycles of patches and upgrades. All this complexity adds up to constant maintenance, less security, much higher costs, and headaches for users. 